What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Thursday, February 15th, 2018. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside Easy Allies' own Michael Huber. Hello! Thank you for coming in! Thank you for having me. Are you excited? Very. I realize that, here's the thing, you've been around all morning. Mm -hmm. We've given you no instruction. It was when we were awkwardly waiting for Cool Greg to point that I'm like, he doesn't understand what's happening. And we, we haven't, Kevin hasn't given me the pep talk either. The microphones, you yeah. want to move them around with you. Get okay. them right up on them. So like okay. you, we're going to be talking like this a lot. Yeah. But just do, settle in. Perfect. Kevin will come over with a cattle prod Good. and prod you if you are not doing it correctly. We need that because Easy Al has mic problems. Oh, yeah. It's a real thing. Yeah, here's the thing people don't get. Yeah, they look at us and they're like, "You guys, Easy Ally is kind of funny. You're making money on Patreon. You're having a great time on YouTube. You guys fuck up the easy stuff." Yeah, they don't understand how hard the it's easy so stuff hard. is. We're slapdash. Yes, putting it, <laughs> putting it together. We did a Monster Hunter stream yesterday, and it was just the normal start of just nothing's working right. And there's it all never these works. No, it Why? never. Does. Nothing ever works. Yeah, yeah, it's a pain in the butt. <laughs> Greg, is the beard to build hype for God of War? Oh. You know, that's a great point. Is that is that where, the beard, where it came from? It was just a mixture of laziness. The audience, whenever I let it go a little bit, going, hey, that looks like it could be good. You should let it go longer. Yeah. My wife saying let it go longer. Oh, then yeah. And then it was just, and so it was just like Christmas came around and we were up in a cabin in Vermont. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to let it go. And then I've never stopped. And, and so the idea was I needed to have it figured out for dice. Yeah. Do I, if it was going to look bad, I would shave it off before Dice Awards. Now we're what a week, literally one week from today, I'll be hosting Dice Wars with Jessica Chobot in Vegas. Now I'm in a weird spot. Um, You're locked in. Nick says it needs to get shaped, but I hate getting a haircut, and I really love Monster Hunter. So like, I really don't think I'm going to set aside the time to go to a real shaping place. <laughs> one, one of the allies, Brad, cuts my hair because yeah. he used to cut hair back in the day. Yeah. So it's like you got to set does up, a great job. You got to set up a routine where like you're playing Monster Hunter yeah. while you're getting your hair cut. What I've talked about is there are, you know, barbers on demand that I can book and have them come somewhere and do it. And I think maybe it would be a funny video if I just sat here and played Monster Hunter while they cut my hair. But I think Kevin would get mad. There'd be hair in the studio and there'd be a million different things. Yeah. For you, I'd make an exception. For me, you'd make an exception. Thank yeah. you very much. Kev. Uh, Huber, for some reason, people don't know you. What's <laughs> the elevator pitch? Uh, I used to work at act, uh, game trailers. Uh, before that, though, I was like the final wave of interns at uh, G4. Yeah. So then G4 went out so of like, business. You shined like shoes and stuff. You like Kevin Pereira or you around. Coffee. Yeah. Ka Pereira wasn't even there. I was, yeah. It was uh, Blair Herder. <laughs> oh, Blair, yeah. the worst. So then, uh, oh, Blair. he was so nice. Oh, Blair. That's Nicest human. Still is. Yeah. Of course, Mary to show about working over mm -hmm. at IGN. I work with him yeah. behind the scenes and stuff quite a bit. Yeah. But my Blair story was like the first event I ever went to was WrestleMania in Detroit. And I got to shadow John Robinson, uh, who did wrestling coverage forever and ever for video games. And we they're like, all right, we're putting you in this other room with the G hole. Yeah. And we're like, what the fuck is the G hole? And they're like, oh, it's MTV's new gaming thing. And Blair walked in and I was like, it took me like 15 minutes. And I was like, wait, is that the guy from Road Rules? That guy was on Road Rules, <laughs> yes. wasn't he? I watched him on. And then he was the nicest human being and still is to this day. Yeah. If you could get rock bottomed by the rock. Sure. Or stunnered by Stone Cold Steve Austin, what would you do? Fuck, Greg that's Miller. a tough one. That's a tough one, they're both, right? They're both standing there. You can get finished by one. I think you'd have to go rock bottom. Rock bottom. Right? You know I what I mean? It's stunner, man. With the with the, the beer cans um, flopping everywhere. Sure. Yeah, I see. Beer going everywhere. I like that you jumped. You you went into full improv mode. <laughs> the of, there's more of there where Stone Cold gives me the beers. <laughs> I get to cheer. I get the sip and then he does the thing where he just like rattlesnake stares you and then stuns you. I knew I was going to like you. <laughs> if you didn't know, this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, head over to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD, where you can be part of the show. Write in with questions, comments, concerns, bad PSN names, and everything else under the sun. Then watch us record it live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. Of course, if you're watching live, you have a special job. You need to go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and listening on podcast services around the globe kevin you getting into some hot cheetos over there putting some twang on them 
I saw you shaking something vigorously, and then I was like, oh, he's making a snack. Flaming hot? <laughs> they flaming hot? Yep, he's of course there. <laughs> Housekeeping for you, the PlayStation VR show is officially live over on Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games. Of course, this is an eight-week seasonal show for Kind of Funny Games. Right now, only up on Patreon for dollar supporters. You can get it next week for free on YouTube. But if you need another reason, a little push for that dollar, you get this show for eight weeks early, and then, of course, today... Mike himself will be over on the Kind of Funny Games cast with Tim, one-on-one, -on -one, talking about games. You can watch that live this afternoon if you went over to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames and kicked us a buck. Also, the show's brought to you by Bombfell, but I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's start the show with what is, and forever will be, The Roper Report. <laughs> Time for some news! Three items on The Roper Report, Kev. You're not gonna say anything. That's nothing. What do you mean? They're good. They're meat. They're good stories, though. You know what I mean? Sometimes like, we get in there. Some fucking padding in we there. We just pepper. No, I, I don't no, want to do I the padding. I can't do Baker's dozen to three. <sighs> Number one, <laughs> Monster Hunter on Switch would be difficult. According to Capcom, this is via mm. Dual Shockers. Since the announcement of Monster Hunter World, many requested a port for the Nintendo Switch. But according to Capcom President and Chief Operating Officer Haru Hiro. Shujimoto. Uh, it would be problematic, as he explained in an interview published this morning by Toy Toyo Kenzei Online. Uh, the, <laughs> the president explains that the game was developed for home consoles and PC because there are limits to what portable consoles can display, and the developers desired to create a game that went back to the drawing board with state-of-the-art tech, answering to the expectations of gamers. This allowed developers to showcase a realistic ecology, and it's an element that has been welcomed favorably by players. Asked about the possibility of developing for Nintendo Switch, the CEO acknowledged that there is such a, there is such a demand, which is why the publisher already launched Monster Hunter XX on Switch. However, considering various conditions, it would be difficult to port Monster Hunter World to Nintendo Switch. The Switch is different from the other home consoles, both in features and user base. Mm. Do you care at all? I mean, I'm already so committed. That's the thing to my hunter. Yeah, I, I, I was very happy. You're also obsessed with Monster Hunter. Yes. Okay, good. Where and are you hunting? Yeah. <laughs> Where are you? How many hours are you in? I think that's a bit because you were saying hunter rank. You're still 11 or 12. Like right 11 there. or 12. Haven't yeah, finished yeah. the campaign. Like 35 hours mm -hmm. in. So, we're right there together. Like I'm telling you, blow off this games cast. Play with me and Kevin after I this. No, I yeah. just want to play. Yeah, we yeah. We got to set up. We got units all over. There's one right there. All hooked up, ready. I'm ready. To go. Okay, okay. I'm always ready to hunt. Were you into Monster Hunter before? No, World? that's uh, that's a funny thing. The back to the drawing board with state of the art tech. Yeah, that's so funny because for the longest time, uh, my friends and, and colleague Ben Moore always tried to get me into Monster Hunter because he's he's such a big fan of it. Yeah, and I would mess around with the the 3ds version a little sure. bit, and it's just like it's so small. I can't I can't get into this. You know, I, I can't judge the scale of how big a monster is. You yeah. know, so I wanted that like console big beefy version. Yeah. So this is really the first time that I've like fully dove into Monster Hunter. Were you surprised that it's got its hooks in you like it has its hooks in you? Very surprised. Yeah. 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 I, I from I mean me as well. Like I always go back to you know I reviewed a couple of the PSP ones. Yeah. And liked them fine, mm -hmm. but they were cumbersome and they were very Japanese mm -hmm. and load times and paintballs on monsters like there was a bunch of things that weren't user friendly I feel but like yeah. and granted there's a lot of things in Monster Hunter world that aren't user friendly necessary yeah. but are I think they found the perfect balance in world of hey you're a hunter in this world that's why there aren't life bars on mm -hmm. the monsters and you have to find tracks which some yeah. people mainly my wife find yeah. annoying oh, I love that stuff I know but I'm <laughs> and, but I'm the guy now being the guy on the, on the bench who's like well it's because they want you to feel like you're a hunter and they want yeah. you to feel the exploration and yeah. when they tried to push that a little bit further in PSP I was like I don't like that at all but they yeah. have this right mix right now yeah that but, calm before the storm exactly sneaking up on the monster exactly and so you know, you jump back, I think, to December. Like, kids were writing in of, like, hey, you guys aren't talking about Monster Hunter World. Why is that? Yeah. And I was very much like, oh, I've just done it before and blah, blah, blah. And then yeah. somebody wrote in and was like, well, I hear, I understand why you didn't like the PSP versions, but here's what they're changing in World. And I think, and I was like, oh, fuck. Okay, now I'm interested. It was like yeah. that little ember that grew and grew and grew until now I'm like, I would quit yeah. kind of funny right now to go play Monster <laughs> Hunter Pro if I could. <laughs> if I could, Kevin. Which I can't. I'm not good enough. Grimecraft could. Uh, for a Switch version, though, like, like I say I'm so committed to the PS4 one. Yeah. But at the same time, Dark Souls is coming out on Switch. Yeah. And like I've been there, finished Dark Souls, done all that. But there's something about showing up even here with a Switch and then seamlessly sitting around a table. Yeah. Everyone has their Switch playing Dark Souls. Yeah. 
thinking about how fun that would be with Monster Hunter because mm-hmm. I saw even on uh, like a like a video in in Japan people set up like four TVs and yeah. four PS4s like LAN party style. Well, that's <laughs> what's so fascinating. You know, I think I mentioned this maybe on Games Daily yesterday, maybe on some other show, but uh, maybe just in a conversation that I sometimes have and the camera's not on. But who knows when that is anymore. I went back, I guess, two nights ago and read my PSP reviews, and it was so weird to be talking about ad hoc mode and how that game and like why it probably never caught fire the way it needed to in America. But in Japan, it was insane because you're on a train and there's your somebody else is playing and you get into a room and you go. You actually do the guild cards and drink and hang Mm -hmm. out. And so now that online gaming is where it's at, Mm -hmm. the idea of a games as a service is where it's at the, you know, people understand what destiny or this or whatever, how to play mm-hmm. these games and have, it's awesome to see it catch fire here that way because yeah. people just want that experience. Yeah. Yeah. And the, like, I think where you live too with portability is a big thing. Mm-hmm. Like when I lived in San Francisco, I definitely played my, my Vita and PSP yeah, more yeah. versus Los Angeles where you're in a car all the time. Exactly. Yeah. That's so. the way people always, you know, we'll talk about switch games here and how I love my switch, but how I, save it for airplanes yeah and people are like well it sounds like you're putting it down because i never take an airplane i'm just playing it at home and i'm like well i'm not it's just my you you know my use case experience yeah very similar to when i would review psp games and i'd yeah. be like on the train because i was riding muni to work every day so i yeah. had 30 45 minutes to screw around with something yeah but yeah monster hunter is amazing yeah. would you double dip on switch <sighs> no no Maybe, what if it was like maybe. similar? What if it's like dark souls where it's like a couple years from like a year or two from now it's like hey, switch version i mean I didn't realize, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I talked about it on the show, like Monster Hunter XX is on Switch or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'd be interested probably to kick the tires on that now and yeah. see what that's all about. But I, it, it, for me right now, I'm with you where I'm so committed to my Hunter yeah. and the gear I have mm-hmm. and the la- loadout I have that I wouldn't want to start the exact same game over right yeah. away. If there was any kind of way of like, you know, transferring, exactly. Transferring, maybe get yeah. Kojima on the case. You know what I mean? But <laughs> kicking around that way, that'd be exciting. That'd be interesting. Yeah. But I know we're not going to do it anytime soon. Because even like Destiny 2, when they the PC launched later, yeah. it was like, man, I already got my light level yep. up. I'm not I'm going in. back. I'm <laughs> in. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> That's what blew me away. How many people did go back? Yeah. I, I hate this game, and they aren't being, oh, I'm going to go buy it on PC and play up all the way. All right, well, whatever you got to do. All right, were yeah. you were you big on Destiny 2? For a bit. Yeah. 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 And then the Curse of Osiris came out, played it, done. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was a similar thing for me, where I really enjoyed it at launch, got the platinum, had a great time, and then Osiris dropped, yeah. and it was like, with no one else now being hyped to play it, yeah. right? No one's enjoying it. It's like, well, yeah. I'll wait for the next big expansion. Still love it. Want to get back to it and raid it a bit. But then Monster Hunter came along. Yeah. And it's like, well. Hopefully Destiny 2 has the Taken King of yep. De- Destiny. Oh, now it's good again, right? The thing <laughs> yeah. that everybody seems to forget about Destiny 1. Yeah. Like, there was a part where everybody's like, this sucks. Yeah. And only like Adam Boys was there every night <laughs> grinding it out. Number two. PUBG is still doing well, obviously. Well, let me say very well, but it's active players are apparently dipping. This is via Bloomberg tech, tech reporter Yuji Nakamura on Twitter. He tweets PUBG hit 30 million in sales last week or this week, but it is churning hard. Blue hole still not taking cheaters seriously enough. IMO. And so then there's this sinking feeling. I, I should have given Kevin this. There's a graph and you can see it go up. How do you, you want to go sky cam? Are you going to pull up the tweet? Because if you search that guy's name on Twitter, You'll find it. Well, basically, a graph's showing it peaking, uh, what, middle of January, right before February, and then starting to come down when it was just below 3.5 million, now starting to come back down towards 2.5 million. Kevin will bring it up while we discuss more. Yeah, sorry, I'm trying to find the guy. Dude, Kev, I just, I just threw you a curveball. <laughs> it's in the title. PUBG Active. Got it. Got it. Got it. Uh, IGN adds to the story, and there's, it was only a couple weeks ago that Fortnite beat PUBG's concurrent PC player record by around 200,000 players. Then... Jeff Clark writes in to kind of funny dot com slash KFGD and says, so PUBG hit 30 million in sales. First, congrats to the team and the people who are working hard on it. However, the PC player base is declining. This seems to be due mostly to the cheater cheater pumpkin eater plague in PUBG on PC. Getting cheating to stop completely is impossible, but it certainly is possible to minimize it substantially. Why can't they get cheating under control and how much of these players are leaving PC for the Xbox version where cheating is not a problem? Love ya and would date ya, Jeff. You play PUBG, correct? Yeah. Where are you playing PUBG? PC. Are you running into cheaters? I'm so bad. I don't even know if people are cheating, you know, like someone mm-hmm. kills me and I just accept it. Like they were better. They were better than me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I hear so, you. So 
I don't know. Have you noticed any difference? Because I'm a I'm a console snob, right? A console <laughs> plebe, whatever. Where I, that's where I play it. So I have been playing on Xbox One at yeah. launch, and then I've dropped off now because of Monster Hunter. Yeah. Are you seeing less players or anything? Is the experience any different for you? For me, no. Yeah. I mean, you you load up a game, it's 100 players, you know, yeah. so you're not <laughs> going to see that dip. Yeah. And I feel like those numbers were maybe unsustainable. 100%. You know? they've, got it. they've got to dip down at some point. Yeah. To Jeff's thing, I don't think the Xbox version is peeling off that many PC players. Mm-hmm. I feel like if you are a PC player, you are hardcore PC. Yeah. That's your ecosystem. That's what you exist in. And yeah. Kevin and I playing on Xbox, and Kevin's still playing on Xbox, turning yeah. his back on Monster Hunter quite frequently. Wow. Turning your back on Monster Hunter. Too many games. <laughs> you can only have one love. And it's the true god Monster Hunter world. The base god. Um, I think, yeah, Xbox players are Xbox players. PC players are PC players. Sure, there's yeah. people who have peeled off one way or the other, but I think, what, yeah, you're, what you're hitting, they're never going to be concurrently three million yeah. people playing this game all the time. I think the crazy thing is that Fortnite passed it. That right? is crazy. Right? And that I know, is. I know Fortnite's free to play and that definitely helps. Yeah. But it's on PlayStation, which has the biggest install base. Yeah. And it's, you know, you can't play PUBG on PlayStation. Yeah. That's yeah. gotta be huge. Yeah. And yeah. then, you know, I, I remember the shot across the bow when PUBG kind of criticized Fortnite right. for adopting Battle Royale. And you, you look at that moment to where they both stand now. Yeah. I would have never guessed no, that Fortnite neither. would have blown up. I, I, and I don't even think Epic probably thought that Fortnite would have blown up this way because mm-hmm. it's a great way to revitalize a game that was mm-hmm. doing what it was doing. Yeah. I don't think Fortnite Save the World mode was going to set the world on fire. Mm-hmm. I think it was a very much a Paragon situation, right? Of, hey, we're, we like this game. We've released it. There's an audience for it, but we can't sustain, we can't sustain on that forever. Yeah. And so then to go and add this you know, PUBG mode in there, a Battle Royale mm-hmm. mode, it was a brilliant move. They were the first people to really blatantly just be like, Hey, we put in this mode and we love PUBG, so we're happy to put it in here. And then yeah. it was such a weird look to have PUBG be like, what the fuck, guys? What would have been interesting is when it happened, I remember saying, like, this is a marketing nightmare the way PUBG's handling this. All you're doing is giving Fortnite more advertising yeah. and free opportunities to piggyback off of this. If PUBG would have been radio silent on it, I wonder if Fortnite would have been as big as it is. Yeah. It, or it would have happened as fast, would it have taken more time? Because it's so weird now of Fortnite, a game that we've known about for years since that original weird teaser trailer. Yeah, right? so long ago. The fact that you pop up and there was that guy's house that was on fire. Did you see this? There was an apartment building on fire on Reddit and it was like on the front page or whatever. This it was like uh, when the house is on fire, but you need to get you need to you need to get that chicken dinner in Fortnite. And it was like <laughs> them outside filming a fire, and oh then they like God. zoomed in up here, and the guy's still playing Fortnite. You can just see his screen as he ran around. And then there's that other amazing clip going around that I retweeted the other day of uh, that house party where the guy's playing or whatever, and he had built a tower up into the sky in the center of the circle. Yeah, and so he's like shooting down from the top of the tower and can't get the guy, so he jumps off and changes the shotgun, and like just as he gets there, blasts a dude and wins nice. the game. It was like. Those moments are in the sea. Fortnite getting so much reach. When I remember seeing, it, I'm like, "Oh, this is gonna be a, a niche game." Yeah. But here it is. Everyone's talking about. It, everyone knows about it, and now it's yeah. kicking the shit out of PUBG. I, not I, kicking the shit out of PUBG. I love the end game of Fortnite. The last, like, the last stand, the last mm, ten or fifteen mm, players, mm. just like building yeah. towers up and up and up. Ha, so, do you have you played a lot of Fortnite? Are you committed to PUBG? I. I'm committed to Monster Hunter. Okay, that's my man. <laughs> that's my man, Kevin. That's what people do here. <laughs> Uh, but I, I dabble in both. I would say. Okay. Okay. Do you like one more than the other? Put you on the spot. Uh, more people I know play Fortnite Mm. and I'm all about that jolly cooperation. Sure. So that usually pulls me into Fortnite. Yeah. So yeah. A bizarre. Bizarre. Uh, as for the cheater situation, though, I know that like when you have so many people, like 30 million people, it it doesn't seem like they're, they're making progress, Mm -hmm. but I have seen the, the recent numbers where they said they banned like one and a half million or or even close to 2 million. I think that's pretty good. They're they're working on it, right? They're trying, they're booting these people out the best they can, but yeah, it is a struggle. And like, you know, why can't they get cheating under control? Mm -hmm. I would imagine as fast as you make a fix, cheaters are trying to figure out a way to get around that fix and figure out how to do it. I grew up with counter strike, so I'm well accustomed to the PC cheaters. People like floating through walls yeah, and yeah, aimbot yeah, yeah. and everything. Monsters. Yeah. That's why you play on console, right? Yeah. Gra- <laughs> graphics, frame rate, not as good. Yeah. Cheaters, I assume it's harder. TV screen, you know? That's what I like to hear. Do you ever... Oh, sure. I thought you were showing it already. Here's the here's the chart right now. Kevin's going to throw it up. Bam! You get to see a little that bit there. dip. 
of course. Do you ever there. like trying to beat the cheaters though by not cheating? Like in like in Counter Strike, oh, sure. it would always be so fun just trying to like take them down. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Try to outthink the cheaters. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're not good. No, we can't do that. We can't do that. Number three, more about loot boxes, the ESRB, and the Senate. This is via IGN. U.S. Senator Maggie Hassan of New Hampshire has issued a letter to the Entertainment Software Rating Board, the ESRB, outlining her concerns with microtransactions, specifically with regards to loot boxes in video games. Senator Hassan specifically refers to games allowing in-game purchases for surprise winnings, which are targeted to and used by children who may be particularly susceptible to being addicted to them. Senator Hassan also mentioned the recent World Health Organization update, which added gaming disorder as a diagnosable disorder as a reason for concern. The senator asked the nominees if the FTC uh, would be willing to look into the loot boxes independently, depending on the ESRB's response to her letter. All three nominees questioned questioned stated that they that if they are confirmed they would be willing to cooperate in an investigation where do you come down on all this loot box microtransaction business now is it gambling do we need people to step in there was a time when i would boot up overwatch just to buy loot boxes greg wow i'm not even kidding wow why i want that skin okay i didn't even play the game i just wanted those skins sure this lasted for like a couple weeks you know not not a huge problem but like I've got an addictive personality. Yeah. You know, I, I, and, and you see these, these stories and these headlines of kids getting their parents' credit cards yeah. and spending thousands. Like I, I do think it's gambling. I don't think we need to get extreme about it. Like the government stepping in and all sure. this, but I think the ESRB should adapt and clearly define that there is some kind of gambling within the games that have it. The ESRB, I feel at this point, because this is, you know, the second one this week. The first one was Hawaii mm-hmm. doing a whole bunch of le- uh, submitting legislation to worry about loot boxes yeah. and all this jazz. We're back to the violent video game argument that spurred on the, ra- the you know, unified ratings board. Mm-hmm. ESRB and video game industry in general has to do something. Yeah. Because the last thing we want is the government yeah. actually getting really involved. And that's what happened with ESRB or the parental advisory label yeah. on, you know, music, Mortal right? Where Kombat. it was like. We'll fucking take care of it ourselves. Don't come in here. Yeah. The government's all screwed up. The last thing I need is somebody coming in here being <laughs> yeah. like, oh, well, this has to do this and this can, it can't be sold in Hawaii, but it can be yeah. sold here. And it's like, get it and fix it and do it. Yeah. Like clearly there's enough demand. There's enough outrage. There's enough concern. And that's the bigger problem, right? Mm-hmm. Is that I feel we've gotten to the point now that mainstream consumers just reading the newspaper or watching TV now know about loot boxes, but they don't know about, they know about the the concept and the evil loot box. They don't understand how it's really being used. And they're hearing the story of some kid who spent 10 grand on loot boxes with the parents credit card or something like that. Yeah. There's a middle ground there that isn't as crazy as it seems right now. Yeah. Like some kind of logo on the box or yeah, something or exactly like just something so small so simple i think would go a long way and i feel if, as long as if they would just if the srb would just do something right as long mm-hmm. as they can point to it and be like well we've introduced a new rating you know it's e for everything and there's like a whatever e yeah. for everything e for everyone <laughs> with a little whatever lb on it yeah. that on the back says you know does this and beware of children or that automatically takes it up to being a teen game mm-hmm. it seems like such a messy concept too because like some games are free to play that have them. That yeah. you, can, you can play the game for free, but you don't need the boxes. Right. Some of them are like like Battlefront 2 when that started. It was right. like some will give you an edge. Some are purely cosmetic. I feel like, so, yeah, you have to move it to skins and stuff being, I, again, I'm always going to be the one of like, I like giving games I love money, mm-hmm. right? Like, you know, yesterday we, we just bought Gen Monster Hunter because she'd been playing on my main console at home, right? So like she could have her own game and not have... And I finally was just like, this, who, fuck the hoops. Give them the money. They deserve the money. We love the game. Yeah. And it's the same thing of like, I'm sure they're going to add armor or more stuff. And I'm going to want to, oh, that'll be cool. And I'll buy it. Like, I don't mind paying for something. I just want to get what I pay for. And so yeah. loot boxes, when it is, hey, like there's going to be an advantage. That's pay- That sucks. Yeah. When it's, hey, you can roll for a skin. Even then, can I just pay you the money for the skin? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. There's got to be some middle ground here. And I play Hearthstone pretty religiously. So yeah. it's like, you Still? get those... Yeah, it's on my phone. It's on yeah. my phone, you know. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know. My switch always with me, but I always have my phone. So sure. it's like pick That's up and true. play. Yeah. And it's you get those loot boxes. And it's like, all right, I really need a couple cards, 
And then it's like, oh, I didn't get what I needed. Yeah. So then you can like disenchant them all, but you get like that currency to like get what you want. Yeah. But it's always so rigged like a slot machine. It's sure. like you need to disenchant like a hundred cards to get the one you want. Yeah. It's a pain in the so, ass. Yeah. But you can't let you buy it because then the game's over. Yeah. <laughs> They're right. They're preying on addictive personalities. Yeah. But the ESRB has got to do something. And I'm sure they know this. Mm-hmm. I feel like that since the battlefront you know, went nuclear since yeah. that news story went nuclear and everyone was talking about it and it's yeah. being linked back to EA's like numbers being down. Yeah. Somebody over there has to be thinking uh, about still it. not back in the game. The microtransactions. What do you think's going to happen there? Oh, they're going to put them back in. Yeah. I mean, that was the, you know, that was the statement a couple weeks yeah. ago, right? Of like, oh, we're, we're getting closer to putting them back in and, and yeah. then everybody freaked out. And it's like, I would hope at this point. Yeah, they see what everybody freaked out about. And when they yeah. put them back in, it won't be. Hey, here's how you win. It will be. Hey, here's a skin. Hey, here's a whatever. Yeah. Blah 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 blah. But who knows? And the, uh, one of our uh, listeners wrote in and was talking about the fact of with them teasing bringing microtransactions back. What if that was them then making Star Wars Battlefront two free to play? Mm. And I was like, that's an interesting thing, right? Because I don't think you could put the single player out free to play, but I think you could put multiplayer is free to play microtransaction backed. Once you're inside, if you want to buy the single player for thirty dollars, you mm-hmm. can do that. Yeah. That would be an interesting way, and then it would diffuse the argument because it seemed like the biggest problem people had outside of, I guess, microtransactions slash loot boxes leading to you being able to, you know, have an advantage. It yeah. was more the fact that it's a sixty dollars game. Why are you nickel and diming me to play as Darth Vader? Yeah, yeah. What do you think? I think it, that'd be tricky too because all the people that have already bought the game, mm-hmm. you know, if you went to free to play, you'd have to give them some kind of like founders pack or sure. some kind of thing to alleviate that. You know them being annoyed by well, that. I'd, be lo- I'd love to know what the numbers look like on who's still playing it. Like, is there still a, a dedicated multiplayer yeah. community to Star Wars Battlefront Two? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. And then like the, all the movies coming out. You know, there's yeah. probably going to be good time to good time to relaunch it. You know, you have Solo come out. Yeah, slide those loot boxes in right <laughs> there. You know, capitalize on the Just movie. Keep looking like the EA everybody hates. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Uh, rumor going around too that hasn't made it. It's been getting kicked around this week. I haven't bothered putting it in because it's just it's a top super level rumor. But heads up that there's a rumor that Star Wars and Lucasfilm is so upset that they're they've had meetings with like Activision and other people about this. Maybe okay. not even Activision, but they've talked to other companies. I think it was Ubisoft and Activision, but kind of funny.com slash you're wrong about that rumor. Yeah. So that's happening, but I haven't yeah. seen it anywhere. Like no offense to where I've seen it, just substantiated. Like yeah. here's real what I it's, So maybe that's happening. Yeah. We'll see. It'd be smart if they just did it like Overwatch where it's just skins and yeah. sprays and icons. Right? It'd be smart. Yeah. If they didn't try to gouge you if they just looked at what is successful oh let's follow that instead of let's try to get in here and really fuck up everything just really fuck it up i reviewed it and i just remember starting multiplayer and playing with the people like right when it was pay to win like right ground zero and there was like the thermal detonator card that was like all right your thermal detonator has a bigger blast radius and it does more damage just straight up yeah i can remember just running into battles and just like the Detonators just dead, dead, dead. <laughs> just like, ah! Fun times. So Who would have thunk that it could it wouldn't it wouldn't work out as the way they wanted it to? Um all right, I didn't set you up for this. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I didn't talk to you about the show at all. I'm gonna say something weird right now. Okay. And then I need you to read this bold underlined portion. Just that portion, right? Yeah, okay. right there. Okay. Right, 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 right. Uh I'm excited to see what happens with Battlefront 2 when they bring back microtransactions. But that's so far away. If I wanted to know what came to the digital mom and grop shops today, Mike, where would I go? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts each and every weekday. Yeah. Uh, out today, it's Thursday. You know that means there's a ton of Nintendo Switch stuff. If I don't read a platform, it's because it's on the Nintendo Switch. Don't bust my balls. Aqua Kitty, UDX, Escape Trick 35, Fateful Enigmas, Johnny Turbo's Arcade Gate of Doom. Millie, Pool Billiard, Quest of Dungeons, Samurai Aces for Nintendo Switch. That's in the title, I had to say. Torque L, Physics Modified Edition, Violet, uh, Wonder Jaw, Try Again or Walk Away. There's also a demo version for that one. Uh, Xeno Drifter, Machine Knight on the Nintendo 3DS, RTO2 on the Nintendo 3DS, A Certain Magical Virtual On on PlayStation 4, and Vita. Vita lives. Uh, Secret of Mana on PlayStation 4. Vita. Vita lives. And PC. Fe. Or no, I think Faye's on Switch tomorrow. FE is on Switch tomorrow. Yeah. I don't know how that's crept on the list today. There will be a question about it. Stay tuned. And then Fortnite is back up and running after patch 
v 2.5.0 is live the update brings new lunar new year legendary skins and weapons a new grenade and 4k support to xbox one x okay so you're gonna get home and play that aren't you uh, All right, you're Mike. i'm kind of intrigued for johnny turbo's arcade gate of doom I'll give them this. What a name. They're trying. What is that game? So many games come in here and it's like, eh, it's our title. And you're like, whatever. <laughs> Machine Knight. Don't want to get talking about it. Yeah, Johnny, Johnny Turbo is up to something. Gate of Doom. Like, f as soon as we're done here, I'm looking that up. The blast <laughs> is the, the continual nuclear explosion of Switch games every Thursday continues yep. to the point you'll never be able to find anything on that store again. New dates for you. The Station, the first person sci-fi mystery game from a group of AAA veterans whose credits include Bioshock Infinite and Kingdoms of Motherfucking Amalur launches on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC February 20th, 2018. Keep in mind, Remastered is on Steam, iOS, and Android March 8th. Uh, Farming Simulator 19 is coming to consoles and PC at the end of 2018. Shaq Fu, a legend reborn, will launch this spring for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, and Nintendo Switch. Silent Streets, the Mockingbird, launches March 1st. And then, I swear to God, Kevin, <laughs> Sea of Thieves, as a <laughs> Sea of Thieves is getting another, uh, scale test. We bri briefly brought this up at the end of the show yesterday. Here's the official word. As a result of the closed beta, we are planning on running a couple of scale tests between now and launch, with the first of these beginning Friday, February 16th at 10 a.m. GMT and ending on Sunday, February 18th at 10 a.m. GMT. Nice. Do you play CST? Have you played CST? I haven't played it yet. Okay. Really intrigued. Are really you a big multiplayer to. guy? Yeah. Okay. Love multiplayer. Yeah. Love single player. Yeah. Love too many games, Greg. Uh, yeah, there's too many. It's uh, just, there's too much good stuff out. Uncharted 3 is a 10. So come here. <laughs> yep. That's why I'm here. Yep. That's why I'm here. And it doesn't mean we're taking anything away from Uncharted 2 when we say that. No. You know what I mean? They they can both be tens. They can both be tens. <laughs> Roper fucked everything up by giving it a nine five, and that's where we all got off track. That's where the arguments all started. Uh, uh, so I'm, you, I'm very optimistic with video games, but Sea of Thieves kind of scares me. Mm. I can see the potential for a No Man's Sky situation. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of nervous. Yeah. The th the only thing being beneficial is that from the beta, it seems like people came away with positive receptions. Good. Cool. And I think Xbox Game Pass having included there, mm -hmm. positive receptions. Because even if you put your 10 bucks in for that month and you don't like Sea of Thieves, well, I have all these other games to play. Yeah. That should mitigate it. Mm -hmm. I still don't... I Before they announced Xbox Game Pass... Oh, yeah. fuck. That's a dollar for Andrew. I can't. I keep saying it, Xbox. This is an example. Games instead of game, and it fucks Xbox me up. And not, I gotta owe oh, Andrea a dollar every time. Before they announced that integration, I was very much like, "This game's dead in the water." No pun intended. <laughs> that it's gonna come out, and a bunch of kids are gonna jump on. I don't think it'll, it'll have a community that'll sustain itself for a little bit. Very, but it'll be super small. It won't go big. It won't do this. <laughs> Putting it with Xbox Game Pass, I think, it's a brilliant Smart. move. Right of like yeah. now you people will be encouraged to try it and then actually some more people stick around to see if they yeah. are, enjoy it. The biggest thing that concerns me is trying to play with a group, mm -hmm. you know, like having to rely on three friends or, or two, two or three friends to have a, a full crew of four. Yeah, which they say is like the best way to play. You get the bigger ship. You can still do single player in like a smaller boat or smaller ship, but the beauty of like a Fortnite or a PUBG is you can you can hop on solo. Monster yeah. Hunter, you can hop on solo, and you can also, if your friends are online, you can group up. I wonder how fun it will be to play by yourself, if yeah. or if you're constantly going to need to wrangle. Yeah, how rewarding wrangle the gang it'll be. together. Yeah, and so. like, you know how unwieldy that can be, right? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get everybody on the same schedule yeah. and do this. But it's hard. It's hard. I, like I said, I've heard good things. Yeah. I, I, obviously, we're in new party modes. Tim's yes. already said it. it'll be the best party mode we ever do, but I don't know if it's it'll ever be, awesome. be like... Is that, you know, going to be replicated when you're playing at home yeah. when it is just you guys screwed around and somebody's got to run downstairs and fire the cannon while somebody else does the mast? Yeah, we'll see. I just want to like uh, board Hammer? up the ship. Okay. <laughs> you like wanna... Water's flooding in. <laughs> We're dying out here. <laughs> Deals of the day for you. Surprisingly, we've got a bunch to commemorate human fall flats, 2 million sales achievement. The game will be reduced by 50% on steam from from now on. From February 15th on, I guess. Uh, PlayStation VR is now starting at $199, uh, February 18th through March 3rd. Again, I swear the PlayStation VR show is not sponsored by PlayStation. They just timed this announcement with the release of the show on Patreon. Xbox is inviting all Xbox Live members without a gold membership to play online with friends for free during... Xbox's free play days for all event from Thursday, February 15th at 1 8. No, at 12. What now? Until Sunday, February 18th. By the time you hear this, February 18th, uh, midnight. 
on Xbox One and Xbox 360. Steam's having a Lunar New Year sale. It's running now until February 19th. There's a whole bunch of games up there discounted. Too many games? Too many games indeed. Are you a big PC guy too? Yeah, I grew up with PC and like Nintendo and sure. I have no no formal no allegiance. allegiance. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like but, it all. But you have that Steam library of shame yeah. of things you've bought on a sale. Oh, yeah. Know. yeah. So many games on there. And then one final deal of the day for you. Civilization 4, the complete edition, can currently be had for free on Twitch. It's available from now until February 21st and can be claimed from Civ 4's game page or by clicking the Prime Loot button from the Twitch website's top bar while logged into a Twitch Prime account. Remember, if you have Amazon Prime, you have Twitch Prime and it gives you benefits like this game, but it also, more importantly, gives you a free subscription. You need to give away each and every 30 days to a Twitch streamer. We'd love it if you gave it to Kind of Funny Games. Uh, you might be saying, Saying, Greg, I'm in a car right now driving to work. I understand that, but you probably have Amazon Prime, right? So just do me a fucking solid. And when you sit down at your goddamn desk and you're already logged into your Amazon Prime, just Google Twitch Prime. Then there's a little button you click. Then it takes you right to Twitch. You go to Kind of Funny Games. You keep the ship afloat here. You know what I mean? Do it. You think Kevin's hats cost? Do it. Kevin's hats aren't free. They aren't free, Kevin. Neither are those Cheetos. Neither are the Cheetos. Those were free. Oh, they were? Yeah. Where'd those come from? <laughs> Oh, nice. How oh. nice of him. Where'd you get this hat, though? I've never seen this Vans hat. It's, I'm a sriracha bottle. <laughs> oh, you're a sriracha bottle. Is the hat green? From here, it looks black. Yeah, it's green. Okay, okay. Sorry. I can't. I'm sorry. Come and walk on camera and show it. Now, I'm going to get ready for... I'm going to I'm gonna do the reader mail thing in the, in, in the ad, but this is... Kevin dressed as a sriracha bottle. It's green. Mike, it's time for reader mail. <laughs> But first, I'm going to tell you, it's brought to you by Bombfell. You might have noticed Greg Miller's been looking pretty good on Kind of Funny Games Daily, and it's thanks to Bombfell and their one-on-one -on -one stylist. Bombfell is an online personal styling service for men that helps find the right clothes for you. Once you sign up online and complete a simple questionnaire, you are matched one-on-one -on -one with a dedicated personal stylist who handpicks every piece. Your stylist will email you a preview of their selections, after which you'll have 48 hours to make any changes or even cancel altogether. You're in total control. Afterwards, Bombfell will ship you the selected clothes, and you'll have seven days to decide and only pay for what you want to keep. Send the rest back with free shipping both ways. You can receive clothes every one, two, Two or three months, and you can pause or cancel any time. Clothing is shipped straight to your door. No need to spend hours at the store, which is what I hate. Much like not wanting to get a haircut or a beard, I just hate going out and doing errands of any kind. I'm not an adult. You're right. I'm a giant man baby who plays video games. And now, with every shipment, the more you keep, the more you save. You keep two items, you get 10% off. If you keep three items, you get 15% off. If you keep four or more items, you get 20% off. Uh, again, uh, this is uh, full disclosure. This is not a shirt from Bombfell, but I've signed up for Bombfell through this. They send you the clothes. This app is easy. It's a cool questionnaire, and it takes off all the hassle. Sounds like, I'm not even kidding. This sounds awesome. It's a good deal because I, I don't no know how to dress myself. I don't know how to have, dress myself. I don't know how. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you go there and they talk to you and they're like, "All right, we're gonna do this," and they're like, "Trust me, you'd look good in it." And then I put it on and I come out and every time I do, Joey they're Noel, like, oh. who has style, goes, "Ooh." <laughs> So, like, there's something <laughs> happening there, all right? Uh, we have a special offer just for listeners of the show. For $25 off your first purchase, go to bombfell.com slash kindoffunny. That's bombfell, B-O-M-B-F-E-L-L dot -L com slash kindoffunny. You'll get $25 off your first purchase, bombfell.com slash kindoffunny. Thank you, Bombfell, for the support. Michael Huber. Yo. Let's get into reader mail for you. Let's do it. Jared writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, Good day to you, Greg, and Mr. Michael Huber himself. I have a question for Huber. <laughs> what are your favorite World of Warcraft memories? Ooh. I always hear the allies mention the game, but never really go in depth. Also, what is your hype level for Battle of Azeroth? Because my hype level is absolutely astronomical <laughs> with those sweet, sweet warlock changes. I have no idea what he's talking about. Take me home, Michael. <laughs> have you ever played World of Warcraft? No. Never once? No, no, no. How no. about like Warcraft? Just Warcraft? No, no. No. I played DC Universe Online for 700 hours, so nice. I understand MMOs. I liked the, uh, everyone always did flying in DC Universe, but yeah. I loved the running. Speedster. Yeah, that was a good class. That was a good class. The um, developers always gave me shit because my main was Taylor Swift, but I made her fly. <laughs> and they're like, you're a moron. Why wouldn't you make her a speedster? Taylor Swift. And I was like, I wanted to fly. Yeah, <laughs> I, was like, I, to fly. I knew what I was doing is yeah. I role played as this pop musician that is now a superhero. I don't yeah. know. Sorry, I digress. World of Warcraft. Uh, favorite memories... Vanilla World of Warcraft, the original before the expansions. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Terran Mill was this place that you would go to when you were about like level maybe 15, I think. I don't know. I don't remember exactly the level, but it was fairly early on in the game. Uh -huh. And 
it was like the first area where it was really Alliance versus Horde. So it was just a bloodbath. Yeah. Every time you'd log on, you would, you would, if, and if you're trying to level up, you know, high level people would come and kill Sh- you. Fuck people up. Yeah. I just remember always people typing in chat like, yo, we spotted two Alliance over the hill. Like, level like people would ask what level they are and there was just this sense of community and the sense of like a real war is going down and that world pvp has has never really like been recaptured in world of warcraft ever since like flying mounts came sure you know everyone kind of just flies around like there's still world pvp but it was never that good epic terran mill that's awesome so fun that's the thing about video games even though you know i've never played it or whatever like listening to you talk and the excitement you have and the <laughs> memories you have that's what oh, video games are right yes. when you get when you have those moments that define a game for you to go back to them and talk about them, i'll never forget it and yeah. then like stranglethorn veil vale too is like that you'd go there a little later maybe when you're like level 30 or so same kind of thing just real there was like a town called booty bay where like alliance oh. and horde could both go in okay so you could walk around together but if you attacked someone the guards would just kill you yeah so there's just this uneasy alliance, this like uneasiness kind of standoff. People would wait outside of the town for people to leave. <laughs> it was just oh, good. So times. what about this battle for Azeroth then? Really hyped. The the cover is reminiscent of like the old Warcraft One and Warcraft Two. Okay. Uh, just like the the orc and the human like yelling at each other. Yeah. Uh, and they've talked about kind of recapturing that RTS element of okay. old Warcrafts. So I'm very excited. I've kind of I'm in the I'm in a place with World of Warcraft now where. I'm committed until the game ends. Every time an expansion comes out, they have me for a month. Okay. So I'm all in for a month, get to level cap, you know, maybe do the raid once. And sure. Then kinda, That's a good way to do it, up. I think, right? Yeah. Because yeah. I'm so committed. I've been playing so long, and I can't wait for, like, the final expansion. Like, what is that even going to be where they where it is just... Have they talked about that? No, okay. no. But when World of Warcraft end, ends, can what you even imagine never, yeah, how intense that's going to be? Will it even end? I don't even know if it could ever end. Yeah. I mean, it'll have to one day. But if I it ends, I just want everyone, one final clash, Alliance vs. Horde, just to that's end That's awesome. Like, oh, when man. you die, you die. You're, you get logged out or something. <laughs> Because I remember when Star Wars Galaxies ended. Yeah. And that and was just, very somber. You know, oh, yeah, everyone yeah. kind of gathered on Tatooine and kind of just said their goodbyes. Yeah. And crazy. That's the thing, you know, as, as committed as I was to DC Universe Online, yeah. and like I still pay my annual subscription, so like none of my stuff gets taken away. Yeah. I'll never ever get into it. I've, I've tur- I turned it on, <laughs> I think, late last year. It's like, yeah, and I jumped in, I was looking around, I'm like, I have no fucking idea what's happening anymore. <laughs> Who's yeah. doing it? I was way overwhelming and I left it. But it's like, when that game does wind down, like You'll I will be in. devastated and I will do a stream of me yeah. being there and dancing in fucking Watchtower yeah. or whatever the hell it's going to be. <laughs> uh, I put a note here to myself while you were talking. Announce. Uh, you know, I did this. I do housekeeping every day. I was very much on Nick Scarpino today. You got to promote this thing. You got to promote this thing. Then I forgot to promote it. We put out a video <laughs> today. Very important to the future of Kind of Funny. It's on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. It's on the Twitter account. It's basically teasing that on Monday we are going to make the family a little bit bigger and bring in a new Kind of Funny Games Daily Show host and a new permanent, well, you know what I call it, permanent, third chair for Kind of Funny Games cast. We will reveal on Monday who that person is. It will be very exciting. Kind of Funny Games Daily will be the part where we did debut it. Yeah. So just heads up, that trailer's out there. It's very interesting. It's very funny. A lot of scuttlebutt on the internet about who it could be. Spoilers, it's not me. It's not you. No, sorry. <laughs> it's not me. We, we, come on. Easy Al is doing a bit too well for Kind of Funny to come and take you. Uh, Billy the Door writes into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, Dearest Mike and Greg, so glad to see you on the show, Huber. More Labo Gabo. Seems like the embargo passed for Nintendo Labo coverage because it's everywhere today. Can we get a hype check on Nintendo Labo? I don't think I will buy it, but it looks like there are a lot of cool features, especially the piano. Greg, it looks like you have a lot of options for your performance at Kind of Funny Prom. Also, Huber, can we please get an Albert Wesker? Thanks. Albert Wesker. Complete global saturation. Greg, what's your hype level for Resident Evil? Resident Evil. God, the VOs were so bad in those games. Uh, so bad, but so Resident good. Evil 7. Are you kidding me? Yes. Blew my mind. Yes. Last year when I played that in VR, yeah. I was like, this is insanely awesome. And I bought the DLC recently and played it. And I'm like, this is not the game that I liked as much. Which which one? Which DLC? I jumped around. I jumped around trying to find it. Somebody said for me to play Daughters. 
and I started that and okay. wasn't but I didn't do it in VR and then I played the one where I was just punching things you didn't like it no I don't, I don't want to be scared dude you like suplex people and powerbomb people I don't want to be scared I don't want to be this crazy guy punching you're like a professional wrestler in it yeah, <laughs> so when I'm looking for that experience <laughs> they deserve the money because the game was great but I was like yeah I need to get back to some more of the tape yeah. stuff you know what I mean yeah yeah uh, but you loved it yeah yeah Resident Evil 7 Labo support. <laughs> Build your own yes. Resident Evil family member. <laughs> uh, what, do you, what, what Labo? Where, what's your read on that? I haven't talked to you about Labo since it yeah. got announced. Uh, Nintendo, be a Nintendo, be crazy, Nintendo. doing some crazy stuff. Yeah. Uh, very intrigued. Always excited for new things. Sure. Uh, but I think because of the price, it's a little expensive. Yeah. So I think that puts a little more pressure on the games to be good. Yeah. So that's kind of where I am. Like if the if the games are good, it's it's awesome. There was a new yeah. There was three trailers released today. It was more about uh, the garage, which we've talked about before, where you get to build your own things and in- incorporate stuff you have from other things. It, it all seems cool, but it is very much like I'm watching that go, and I'm like, that's awesome, and I love the creativity. I love all this different stuff. I'm not like excited about it. Like yeah. I, you know, it'd be cool. To be, like I, I made a joke of wanting to play the piano, the, yeah. the Labo piano at kind of funny prom, yeah. June thirtieth. <laughs> Well, I forgot about it till this moment, so like I don't know how serious I was. And you call me on it, I have to do it. All right, I have to do it, says Kevin. Uh, what about the giant robot one? The robot thing looks really cool, <laughs> but it's again like I don't want to sit here for two hours, assemble it, and then me and Kevin do one let's play and we're done with it. Yeah. And like if any of us had kids, I think it'd be a different thing. And I think yeah. for kids, it's awesome. And I totally I support it. I'm yeah. glad Nintendo's doing it. My hype level is low. Okay. Yeah, you, I, yours sounds like it is it'll too. T- right? It'll take that one kind of sleeper game to come out and be like, "Yo, this is the Labo." Superman this is Labo, Labo, I'm all in. Superman you know Labo, I mean? Luigi's Mansion Labo, I'm all in. You give me a little. You make Lu- a vacuum. You, oh. Give me a Luigi proton pack. I'm all about it. I'm right there. Killing me, dude. Killing me right now. Brandon, I assume Brandon Jones writes into kindoffunny.com/slash <laughs> kfgd and says, "Greg and Huber." Would you still be playing Monster Hunter World as much as you are if you were playing mostly solo? Yes. Oh, really? Because Palicos. Mm, you got your Palico. Sure. Uh, this is not a sad story, but it's kind of sad. I, I had two cats growing up okay. for, you know, like 10 years. Sure. And they passed away a while ago. Okay. So playing Monster Hunter uh, has been cathartic because sure. I named my cat in it Smokey, which is my cat. Sure. And you, so, made it, you made it look just like Smokey, yeah, I assume. Yeah, same yeah. Co- same colors, yeah. and it's like wailing away on some Anjanath with Smokey at my side is just the best. I <laughs> think I would play. His question went on, or do, you, or do you think playing with friends is the reason you're playing so much and having so much fun? Friends definitely add to it. It's totally. awesome to have Kevin, and it's awesome to have you know go home and play, have a game to play with Jen that we're both super addicted to. Yeah. But there is part of me that's just like, not like looking forward to it, but I am looking forward to when like either we're max level or Jen's got to do something else and I'm going to be like, cool, I'm just going to go bust out these bounties for like plants yeah. and go on an expedition and walk around and just collect crap yeah. and knock that out and come back and do like the menial tasks of it totally. to get the armor spheres to be ready for the next thing. The arenas. I love coming together and fighting giant monsters. Yeah. You know, it's awesome to have uh, Grimecraft as our Sherpa who can just run us through everything and explain yeah. what's happening and how to do this and Kevin and I enjoy learning and meeting new things or learning yeah. new things. But yeah, I think I still would be super obsessed with it, even if it was yeah, just because it's it's balanced so well for that, yeah, you know. And yeah. and I think that's why it's so great is because you can go through that campaign solo. Yeah, you know, and they have the SOS flare, so if you get really bogged down on a monster, you can just fire that up and have some people come in and help out. And, and I feel like in a way, like they made joining. If like even right now, Kevin, Jen, and I are all in the same place. Yeah. They made joining each other's quests, story quests, so, so cumbersome that yeah. I think they're very much like play the story alone. Yeah. Learn, and like there has been times where it's like, oh fuck, I got to do this alone. And I'm, I'm like, well, I get it. They're forcing me now to do it solo because like, hey, prove you understand the basics of this game. Yeah. <laughs> you, we don't want someone pulling you through everything so that when you finally get out there, you don't know what's going on. Yeah. Such a what's great your uh, weapon, Greg? Oh, I use dual blades. Dual blades. Nice. What do you do? A hammer. Ah, oh, Kev's a hammer Love club man hammer. too. Yeah, Jen uh, uses the bone arrow. Nice. And she was starting to think about crossbows last night. She was talking to me about cool. it. So yeah, yeah, I don't know all of that. The charge blade looks really awesome. Yeah, but outside of my skill set, man, I don't know what's going on with vials and like the potions. The I thought about getting crazy and trying <laughs> new stuff, but like I was dual blade in the PSP a decade ago. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'll stick it through and do that again. Yeah. I understand getting in, cut yeah. it all up, get out. That's so what's so you're you you usually do like. Dual blade, like yeah. Bloodborne. You did Blades of Mercy, or what? Uh, I didn't really play Bloodborne. I'm sorry, but 
No, I know. Yeah, it's uh, Bloodborne. It's okay. I've respected the Soul series from yeah. the start, right? Yeah. And even Bloodborne, I was like, oh, this is faster pace. And I yeah. get in there and I enjoy the combat enough. But again, then it gets to being super obtuse. Yeah. Of like when you jump back to this where I'm like, I just, like, where I am just I? don't want to do going? this. Yeah, exactly. I'm, yeah. I'm fine. I, I enjoy the combat. Yeah. That's cool. It's like me with puzzles, man. They frustrate me. Mm, yeah. They get me. Jen's family does puzzles at Christmas. Oh. And like I hadn't done a puzzle in years. So yeah. two years ago, first time we went up there for Christmas and we were doing it, it was like, oh, this is a lot of fun. Oh, in the, uh, it was a better example is this Christmas. We went up to Vermont, did this Superman puzzle. Like I a bought. legit puzzle. Legit puzzle. I'm talking about puzzles and games, but this no. is awesome. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think like talking about puzzle puzzles. pieces. Perfect. For a real puzzle, I bought a Superman yes. puzzle and we put it together. Like, it was a lot of fun. And then it was like, you don't think about it when you see this drawing of Superman, but this entire half of his side that was just black. Yeah. And I, I got to that part and I was like, <laughs> wow, this sucks. This isn't fun at it's all so anymore. Funny. Now it's like just taking pieces. No, you don't like puzzles in video games. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes. Sometimes. Somet- well, sometimes I like them. Okay. And other times hate them. You love puzzles? Have you been playing Owlboy, Kev? You need to play Owlboy. Did you play Owlboy? No, but you I want to. I saw the... I was going to get it on PS4, but the, they Switch? delayed it last minute. Yeah, but it's on Switch. You don't yeah, need I'll, it. I'll probably just pick that up. Snap in. Go. Yeah. Um, Brandon ended his question by saying, Kind of funny and easy allies are my favorites, and you all do amazing work. So thanks for this collabo. Gabo. Labo. I uh, hope you find more opportunities to work together in the future. Thank you. I would like that too. People always yell at us. Not yell. But people are always like, uh, I and I love when the guys collaborate with people, but I'd love to see them collaborate with more. I always feel weird hitting up you guys or anybody and be like, hey, can we come down? Yeah. yeah can we come do something? You know? Open we should, door policy. That's what I like to hear. Um, now how do you feel about Rocket League? You got stuff to say about Rocket League? I've played it. I suck at it. I don't even know how people are so good at that game. Prominent Muggle writes in sim- about Rocket League, kind of. Says, hi guys, long time, first time, yada, yada, yada. My question for you relates to esports. Yesterday, Greg said that he thought Rocket League would be the first esport to really break into the mainstream, and I have to write in in my agreement. I have never watched any esports until the first season finals of the Rocket League Championship or Champion Series, and now I try to catch every big tournament that I can. Season 5 of RLCS is about to start, and I'm so excited. So my question is just, have you watched any any pro Rocket League? If you have, did you enjoy it? What about other esports? If you haven't watched any pro league, I re- highly recommend it. Thanks, prominent muggle. Have you watched any esports? Do you care about esports? Well, I catch StarCraft and Hearthstone when I can. Yeah. Uh, very rarely though, and like sometimes you know in the the fighting game tournaments and they have Street Fighter on ESPN. I'll sure, try yeah, to yeah, catch yeah. it, but not really. Yeah, I me guess. neither. I th- I think, like I said, that Rocket League. When they announced it, I was like, oh, that's the first one I think it could really break out yeah. because you could understand it. Totally. Yeah, and, it's like and, soccer. <laughs> and that's what it came up yesterday because you we were talking about PUBG esports. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that was another one that came around. Is like people can jump into that and understand it. I yeah. think that's a great way. Mm-hmm. Whereas like I'm never going to watch a Dota esports thing or League because it's just like I don't understand the rules of that game. It's the same yeah. way like when I watch regular soccer, I'm like, why is the counter going up? What is going on? You know, was, <laughs> how does any of this work? Like it's yeah. just a turn off to me. Yeah. But I think anybody can wrap their head around. It's just soccer totally. cars i 100 percent agree with that yeah so no problem mug esports are dead <laughs> <laughs> i would love to be a shout caster though oh yeah oh you could do it you got the excitement like for game it show you, have to get, you have to get like a uh, uh you know a whole suit and tie combo though yeah that's a big part of it well, well uh what was it called which one the uh oh bomb fell Bo- yeah bomb fell.com They're slash kind of funny up. you can get 25 dollars <laughs> off your first is. uh your first time uh best name of the day writes in, is gonna write in here to kind of funny Games Daily. This is from Randy, aka all caps, Fuck Mountain. Fuck Mountain says, What's good, kind of funny Games Daily crew? I'm really digging the year so far in games and it's only getting better, but there is really one itch that needs to be satisfied. Where the hell is Borderlands 3? We know Gearbox is working on it. We've seen assets from a GDC video. What are they waiting for to announce something? Take Two has teased a big announcement for a franchise this year. It's probably Borderlands, I hope. Think they would announce it at E3 and release in September when these games usually release or let it gestate a bit longer and release it closer to the end of fiscal. Thanks for the content. Randy, a.k.a. Fuck Mountain. Borderlands through October. That's your prediction? Boom. E3 and Lock E3 it. reveal? Yep. Okay, wow. Because they showed, uh, I remember like a, a 
screenshot either leaked or they put it out of just like a character they didn't say what it's from but like here's yeah, yeah. what we're working on and it was clearly a borderlands character sure so you think i figure yeah they've been working on this quite a while mm-hmm. but the problem was i what what throws me is if you remember the first whisper of it in the wind was hey we're making borderlands 3 join our team and they had like a million jobs and i was like that's a lot of jobs for a game (laughs) that i would hope would be further along than this yeah i would say it's probably going to be an e3 announcement through a trailer at one of the shows you know somebody's conference probably playstation and then i think it would be honestly a 2019 release and i could see them saying it'll be out this year and then pushing it to 2019 and i think this game this is the type of game that Similar to what we're seeing with Monster Hunter, and I know my audience is sick of hearing me say this, I'm sure. Monster Hunter, Resident Evil, Dying Light. If they could do Borderlands 3 and put it out in January, February of 2019, yep. they will fucking roll in the money. Those now, January granted, releases, dude. The game's, gonna do, the game's gonna do great regardless, but if you put it out then where everybody, hey, I'm back from break, I played all my holiday games, I want something, because that's what's happened with Monster Hunter. I was like, I want something yeah. new, and then, oh, Monster Hunter yeah. fucking got in and got obsessed. I'm glad you said Dying Light, because that was the same thing for me. Right? It's like, oh, I just want to play something. Dying Light. Yeah, a Dying Light would have done so much worse yeah. if it had come out if it was like i'm going to contend in the fall or even in the the summer that that yeah. like mm, late february early march now like the scrum with april of like god yeah. of war being there where it's like all these big things start hitting if you can get yeah. out in front of that poof so i'm not a businessman greg no we don't have business degrees but why do more developers not try to hit those weird kind of january february earlier months I like was, why? Like my question, I guess, is sure. why so many games like want to be in that October November rush. I think it's still our industry trying to catch up to itself. I think that when I started at IGN eleven years ago, I mean, it was hey, guess what? It's fucking dead until probably the last few months of summer, and then we it goes crazy. Yeah, and I think we all got as an industry that was just how it was you prep for holiday have your game out by black friday that's what it's all about Mm -hmm. and then all these things like ran in to change the way we consume games of digital distribution and the rise of the indies and then suddenly it was okay well you know what people what happened right is that holiday releases kept getting kicked to the the first half of the year spring yeah and so people were like oh fuck it was actually like not it wasn't like a scarlet letter, but it was kind of like, oh, well, fuck. We were clearly this was supposed to be this holiday release, but it got pushed and they're just putting it out there. And then people started seeing those games do well that, yeah, they started thinking, oh, fuck. Well, March is actually a pretty prime territory for a triple A game. Let's yeah. put stuff out there. And I think we're still trying to deal and come to terms with in fiscal years. That's that's yeah, when you get the, the real. Yeah, that's, that's when it gets real businessy. Yeah. Of like, I don't fucking know. It's the same like quarterly revenue. Yeah. Is, hey, it's a take two earnings call on <laughs> on February. I'm like, why is this happening right now? But it's happening, and we're all talking about stuff. Okay, like I think that's it. Is that there still is, I there's still is uh, bravado of like video games come out in that holiday period, yeah. and to the point that I think. And I don't. I think it was a little bit of both of PlayStation fucking up and then realizing that it was a good fuck up of them kicking their games to spring and then us being commentators and being like, well, man, Sony's got no exclusive for the fall. They're going to get their lunch eaten. And then it was like, no, PlayStation 4, best selling console. And it's like, Jesus, oh, they're relying on the third parties. Let them fight it out amongst themselves. People are going to buy the system for that regardless. And then you come to the spring and there's going to be all these exclusives and things to do. Yeah. But I don't know, like if I was in, if I was an indie, if I was making in, the, I think that's the other thing too, of like being an indie studio, right? I feel like every indie studio is like my game will be out at the end of the year. And then three years later, we're still waiting for the game. <laughs> yeah. I feel like if I, if you were an indie that had their shit together and like had everything on lock and I'm not insulting indies, but I mean, I would definitely be like, cool. January. End of January. <laughs> yeah. End of January. I'm coming out huge. and mean, like that game that you thought looked great, whether it's, you know, below, whether it's Y2K, whether it's that Fox game that changed his name and I can't remember Did now. Did ever come out? I don't nope. want to play it. Yep. I want to play it. I want to play it so bad. <laughs> and it's definitely one of those games that uh, I worry about because yeah. it's awesome and it looks great and the idea is great of Below, yeah. but when it was its third packs of us playing the yeah. same Below hey, demo. Cuphead. All right. Similar. Exactly. Exactly. I was worried about Cuphead burning it and yeah. it didn't, so we'll see. But you do, you burn that market share and that cachet, right? Of like, yeah. oh, I remember seeing Marty and Greg talk about fucking below at <laughs> like PAX five years ago, 2014. Like, oh, <laughs> Jesus. I want to do one more. Sweet. Let's see what I want to hit up here. Mm, oh, here we go. Well, this, this is an easy one. This is a slam dunk easy question. Okay. Cyclops 14 writes in 
to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, since there is no confirmed release date for Spider-Man, could Insomniac do something like musicians do when they release music unexpectedly? Although musicians like Beyonce with Lemonade release their projects overnight unexpectedly. That wasn't a full sentence, doesn't matter. Could Insomniac surprise everyone with a release date that is only a week away when the time comes, or is that too sketchy for video game developers, especially Sony? Thanks, as always, for the great content. Never will happen. Love a good shadow drop. I love a shadow drop. Don't get me wrong, but like... If uh, that it, big of a game? That it, would be insane. <laughs> if it was just Insomniac making their own game. Yeah. If it was uh, Rockstar with mm -hmm. Red Dead or a GTA or whatever... Sure, it'd be th that's the kind of crazy shit you play with. Yeah. Sony would never allow that. Marvel would never allow that. Mm -hmm. This game is going to be a juggernaut, yeah. and they're going to want to make sure everyone on the fucking planet knows when this thing's coming. Yeah. They wouldn't want to because it's always that thing of like you put it out, and especially for something that's sixty dollars, right? Yeah. Like they have kids haven't fit, put that in their monthly budget. This that thing, you worry way too much about that. And the fact that since the announcement of this game. PlayStation has been putting it in trailers on TV like it's coming tomorrow. Yeah. They want you to fucking know when this is happening. My favorite thing is like Resident Evil did just a demo, right? You know, or or if they even take that one step further with Spider-Man and do like a prologue type mm, demo where it kind of awesome. leads in. That's yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, fun. Yeah. yeah, Resident Evil was another one that uh, I, I ate my words on because we it felt like that game had been talked about forever mm -hmm. and then we hadn't seen much about it. And then I was like, oh, they're going to delay it out of spring. And then when they didn't, I was like, this is not going to go well. And then I yeah. played that game. I was like, fuck, this is perfect. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Time to squad up. This is where one of you writes into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. You give me your name, username, platform of choice, and I read it here. The best friends, if they like your message, come and find you and play video games with you and prove that kind of funny best friends are a great part of the internet. I would usually say best community, but I'm not going to insult the easy allies here. <laughs> But we're better. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, Kevin, no. They, love and respect. I love Easy Allies. Yeah. Uh, Nathan writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. He needs help on Xbox One. His Xbox username is Groat Simulator. Like goat, he says it's pronounced Goat Simulator with an R. So G-R. There you go. Uh, Groat Simulator says, I shouldn't have to say this, but nine times out of ten, people pronounce it like grout. I understand. Grout, groat Simulator. It's a weird name. Just why? Again, you picked a bad name. And you can change it on Xbox. I digress. Anyways, this is a little different. I'm not asking for help, but offering help. Little detail. A group of about eight of us in various ages of our 20s found each other before the launch of Destiny 1 and have been playing games ever since. A bunch of these guys and gals have become better friends than some IRL. We know the struggles LFG systems can be when playing games, so we love to offer help, play, and give advice in a friendly environment. We play all kinds of games now, like Monster Hunter World, Destiny 2, or Fortnite, to name a few. Again, we're all on Xbox. If you want to play, hit me up. Groat Simulator. P.S. First time, long time. Love the show and the work you guys do. Keep up the great work. Groat Simulator on Xbox. I love Squad Up. Great segment. Oh, thank you very 10 much. 10 out of 10. Oh, thank you. Oh, thanks so, so awesome. much. Yeah, no, I, and I like uh, people write in every so often with success stories and things yes. like that. I'm always like, that's great. That's really good. So to cool. Do it. And they said the magic word. Words. Monster Hunter World. Hell yeah. <laughs> God. I, I have like two calls this afternoon and a bunch of email to get through, but then I'm hoping I can play a little at my desk while you and Tim do the real work. <laughs> if you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show, kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. Watch live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. Of course, watch later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames or listen later on podcast services around the globe. If you're watching live, we ask you to keep us honest by going to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames. Uh, yeah, I, I almost had it perfect. I'm just like, you know, why even fake it that I forgot about this segment and I'm just adding it in here late. You know what I mean? I'm just going to tell you straight to your face. Um... Uh, Abrax says, I believe Monster Hunter XX should be pronounced Double Cross rather than XX. It's a dumb name. I'll pronounce it however. I could have said 20, and I said that would have been fine. 20, yeah. Monster 20. Hunter 20. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Big Bad Beluga says, cheating in shooters on console is still an issue due to the accessibility of keyboard and mouse spoofers, enabling console players to play with the precision not found on the controller. I don't believe it. Never seen it. Doesn't Dude. exist. Uh, Lord of Pwn says, Fortnite was first revealed at the 2011 Spice. And this is, we weren't wrong. We just said, I remember that crazy. Oh, did I say E3? 
I think, yeah, you might have said 2012 or something. I, I definitely didn't say a date. Yeah. So long. Anyways, Fortnite was first revealed at the 2011 Spike Video Game Awards wow. by none other than Cliffy B. I remember that well. Uh, except where it was, but I mean, you know. Mm, no, no, I understand that people cheat on consoles. Oh, here we go. Here's one for you. World of Warcraft. Vin Zombie says Johnny Turbo's arcade Gate of Doom <laughs> is a classic multiplayer action RPG for one or two players originally released in 1990 and is a noted classic arcade title from the 90s. Essentially a diagonal scrolling action game allowing players to choose four characters including knight wizard bard and ninja looks pretty retro sounds pretty retro. Oh, I'm in. Oh shit. Joey Noel pops into the you're wrong category with breaking news. She says, I know, I know this isn't your wrong, but in case you want to talk about it, Jason Trier just dropped this during the show. Big layoffs hit Mafia 3 developer Hangar 13. Ooh. I'm opening that here. Yeah, this is Kotaku. Jason Trier, like she said. <laughs> Mafia 3 developer Hangar 13 laid off a significant number of staff today and yet another example of the video game in- industry's brutal churn. Publisher 2K can ter- confirmed the move when reached by Kotaku this afternoon. Quote, 2K can confirm there have been staff reductions at Hangar 13 in order to ensure that the studio's resources are properly aligned with its long-term development plans. These reductions will not... in Reductions will not influence 2K's ability to create and deliver its products that are currently in development. We never take these matters lightly and are working with the affected employees to support them and explore potential opportunities throughout the organization. Apparently, they wouldn't specify how many uh, were laid off today. Uh, Obviously. Yeah, obviously. That sucks. Thoughts with them. I'm sure everybody land on their feet. Um, Stead says, you mentioned Star Wars Battlefront 2 current players. On Steam, it doesn't look good. (laughs) Uh, 585 we're playing an hour ago 585 is the 24 hour peak 4700 uh, is the all time peak on steam whoa yikes whoa uh, ah, <laughs> and then capitalist pig follows up correcting him he says this is for St- battlefront 2 classic the 2005 game oh, okay. <laughs> the current okay. star wars battlefront okay, 2 is like, only what? on ea's origin for pc i love okay. when someone in your wrong is wrong and gets corrected in your wrong Whew, i was like Jesus. how are only four thousand people playing that uh mac 7695 says first time riding into your wrong i didn't hear surviving mars under release dates march 15th for playstation 4 xbox one and pc i'm pretty sure we've done that earlier in the week or another time because i know i've talked about surviving mars recently uh and then <laughs> This is editorializing, I think. Maybe. Nah, I'll read it just because whatever. JS Collins says, Sea of Thieves isn't going to be a No Man's Sky case. It's going to be more like Destiny as the de- devs described in their article on their website. The game has a strong end game that is apparently includes a new ship, new quest, and beta. And this doesn't... No. He just means... No. No. We're not, no. <laughs> no. I take it back. I wasted my breath with you. Just never underestimate how quickly gamers burn through content exactly like yeah. just, rah, the pe- n- never vast enough the vampy <laughs> bit me right now with her 100 <laughs> monster hunter rank i'm like good lord woman yeah. michael yeah you've been a pleasure oh thank you so much for coming already? by i know it's going well you got a whole day of content so you're not going anywhere don't worry about that remember of course you can watch him kind of funny games cast one-on-one with tim it'll be live today for patreon.com slash kind of funny game supporters at the one dollar level just like the first episode of the playstation vr show is if you don't support at that level you can get it as a video or mp3 tomorrow on patreon and if you want to wait till it's free on youtube or podcast services around the globe you can wait until monday Uh, i'll be back here for kind of funny games daily tomorrow with tim and a new host will be here on monday but until then it's been our pleasure to serve you